Hello lads, what is up? So I have been working on this population simulator and by I have been working I mean that uh, I worked on it uh, for two weeks a few months ago and I haven't touched it since mostly because I was wage cutting and thus I had limited time but this week I got right back into it and I would like to show you some mechanics that I have already implemented and how they work. So this uh, project of mine is currently being developed on the Unity engine with the aid of the c -sharp language. So far there are no graphics whatsoever, it is mostly code and math going on in the background. And I will proceed to demonstrate you how it works and how it works in comparison with the game and how close it is in some aspects despite uh, outwardly not looking like much. So here on the left we have our provinces and on each province reside different units of population. For example on Volos we have Greek Orthodox farmers and we also have Albanian Orthodox farmers. And each pop and each province have some variables that basically make up for the identity of each object. And uh, what is really special about Victoria 2 is that based on these variables and based on how these variables interact with each other, pops engage in some actions all by themselves and those actions are mostly independent from player actions. For example, if a Pope is unemployed and angry, he will be more likely to migrate away from your country. Or if a Pope is well educated and there is enough social mobility, he can promote or demote into another job. In other words, he can pick another profession. And in this video, promotions and demotions is going to be the, the subject. So we have these Albanian farmers here, and the way promotion and demotion works in this game is there are promotion factors and demotion factors, and as long as these factors are above zero, then the pub will be able to promote and demote res respectively and the, highest they are, the higher they are from zero, the more pops will be able to promote or demote. And each pop has a chance to change profession based on a complicated system of variables. In this case, our Albanian farmers can become only artisans or they can become, they can become intellectuals or they can become soldiers since those are the only values above zero and since the amount of artisan promotion is 17 and the amount of clergy promotion is 6 and the amount of soldier promotion is 0 0.3 pops will be way more likely to become artisans each month when the check happens they will be less likely but still likely to become clergy with the chance of them joining the clergy being around three times less than the, ch than the chance of them becoming artisans. And they also have a tiny chance of becoming soldiers. The reason why their chance of becoming soldiers is so low is either because the state already has too much soldiers or because the country that owns this pop has low military wages. So, let's check it out. So, I check out the state where those Albanian farmers reside, which is Volos. And then I check the percentages of each pop's population. And I notice that soldiers are 2.5% uh, of the population, which isn't that bad actually, it's pretty reasonable. And I also know that Volos belongs to Turkey, 
So I go to the government of Turkey and I notice that their military spending is at 50%. So I boost the military spending and I unpause. And I notice that immediately the soldier promotion goes from 0.3% to 10.3%, which means that now this, uh, all these Albanian farmers will be far more likely to decide to become soldiers. And to take uh, to also show you how it works with the population percentages, I will take. Uh, let's see those greek orthodox soldiers 4000 of them they basically represent the larger soldier pop of the region and i will delete them together with those 2000 turkish sunni soldiers so now we will soon see that the soldier percentage of volos will immediately drop down it dropped down to below one percent so if we go once again to the Albanian farmers, now the chance of them becoming soldier, soldiers is 18%. And this is basically the type of uh, dynamic system that I have created so far. And now let's actually check out how it works and let's compare how it stands next to the actual game. So here I have loaded up Vanilla Victoria 2 and let's just pick a pop. Alright, so this pop right here seems to me to be good in order for me to be able to show the differences or rather the similarities. So we have a, around 100,000 uh, large population unit here in Germany, they are laborers, they have zero militancy, three consciousness, their unemployment is at 40%, they can get all of their life needs and basically none of their luxury and everyday needs, and their literacy is at 70%. And also, since in case you didn't know administration efficiency affects promotions but not demotions they also exist in a country where the administration efficiency is 40 percent so what a, and as a result of all these variables each month with each month we have eight promotions to craftsmen and 150 demotions to craftsmen and basically what they will promote or demote to is basically chance. In this case they have a 15% chance of becoming craftsmen, so they just so happen to become craftsmen. They could have easily ended up becoming soldiers or something else. So what I'm, I am going to do is I am going to create in my system a pop identical with these values of the Northern Germans and let's see what will happen and how close I will be able to reach the current result of Vanilla Victoria 2. So I will pick this pop right here of Turkish Sunni farmers and I will begin by changing their size to the appropriate value which is... Excuse me, and as I was saying we have these Turkish Sunni farmers in Volos and I will begin by changing their size to the appropriate value. So they do not have militancy, but they have a consciousness of 3. And uh, like the German pop, their literacy is 70. They get 100% uh, of their life needs and only 1.9% of their everyday needs and 0 of their luxury needs. All right, we're done with that. Their unemployment is 40.2% or something. And let's not forget that uh, this pop belongs to Turkey. So I should go to Turkey and ensure that their administration efficiency is at 40% and indeed it's uh, right there. 
So now I will enable their ability to promote and demote. I will unpause and let's see how close my result is going to be to the real deal. And once again I remind that uh, on the actual game it is 8 people promoting each month and 152 people demoting each month. And let's go. And here we go, this is the result. We got 9.8 uh, pops promoting to Artisan each month. Well, it's thick on this uh, case because I didn't want to wait one month for it. And 148 people demoting to soldiers each month. So, in my book, this is extremely good performance so far. The reason why the, there is a slight discrepancy between the numbers is most likely due to some minuscule differences in the way I wrote my code. For example, I calculate uh, some variables uh, linearly, where in Victoria 2 they are calculated by increments. But it's uh, honestly not that important, almost not worth uh, noticing. The thing that is important is that I have basically one of the four major uh, popo actions up and uh, running. The four main uh, population actions are assimilation, promotion or demotion, migration and voting and politics in general. And basically in terms of promotion and demotion we are done right now. And by done, I mean completely done. It is basically identical to Victoria 2. I also have significant uh, progress when it comes to both migration and assimilation. In fact, uh, I already have a working prototypes which uh, showcase how it works. But both of these mechanics are nowhere nearly at the level that uh, would be considered to be exactly like Victoria 2. So let's just say that those two are in progress. And it's not much work really. I would say that I am halfway done with both of them. Uh, the important part is just ensuring that the variables operate appropriately and that basically when my quote-unquote game is running that we can get results like this aka identical to the game. Once that done all I will have to do is uh, be done with voting and movements in other, word, in other words the political interactions that pops engage in and with that basically we are done. We have a, pop, a population simulation system ready which is fucking great actually and I know that I am a little bit uh, bad at communicating some things but I guess that I can wrap this up by saying that what we have right now in front of us is basically the potential for a future game that will future, that will future pops in the way we like them except it's even better because I have the source code in my hands and I can do with that as I want. And we have the potential for such a game outside of the Victoria franchise and outside of Paradox. And if everything goes well and with some luck you lads might see some pretty surprising things coming out of me in a few years. Who knows? And don't get uh, the wrong idea, this by itself is not a game, it's just a pop system, we are nowhere nearly a game so far. But it is still a considerable percentage of the work that was done in order to make a game. Specifically in Victoria 2, I would say that the pop system without the economic system just by itself is around 10 to 15 percent of uh, the work that was put in Victoria because you still need graphics, you still need uh, artificial intelligence 
you still need diplomacy, pathfinding, and and a huge amount of other mechanics. But still, having a population system ready is going to be a really solid progress. And if I am able to be completely done with this by the end of the next month, I will be pretty damn satisfied with myself. Other than what I just showed you, I have already implemented literacy gain for POPs and population growth based on uh, education spendings and life ratings and how much uh, of their needs are satisfied. And yeah, that's just about it. And yeah, I just feel the need to share this with you so that uh, I can have some people that uh, know that I am to up to something and who look forward into seeing more progress out of me and hopefully gives me an incentive to laze around less and work more so that I can uh, holy shit Natalia Fag so that I can live up to people's expectations so yeah lads thank you for watching this i hope that you will be rooting for me and i also hope ugh, hope that i will be able to make something decent holy fuck oh my god um do something decent <laughs> uh, because we could really use uh, um, use some uh, extra variety when it comes to the strategy, strategy scene which is unfortunately current, currently dominated by Paradox and I don't know if I am being pessimistic but uh, I don't really expect much out of them I think that they have really fallen out of grace and uh, with all these nerds that we have in this space I really hope uh, that... Oh fuck no. <laughs> YouTube won't be happy about this. I really hope that uh, us people in the GSG sphere will be able to produce something of value. Once again, thank you lads for watching. Thank you for your time. I hope that you will be rooting for me. And that I will not disappoint you in this venture of mine. And I will be seeing you on the next one. Goodbye, lads.